All right, hey guys, I'm back with Mark Jones today. We're going to talk a little bit more football. We got the, uh, the training camps opening up in just 10 days. What's going on, Mark? No much. Just just getting ready for some football here. Ready to uh, maybe put the golf bag away a little bit early and start watching some football if my game doesn't improve. But uh, yeah, well, absolutely. I think there's some exciting stuff happening out there in the football land. And it's always fun reading about these guys who either lost weight or put on weight or want to take bigger roles. And lots of times it really boils right down to talent. So kind of sifting through that. It's always, always a little bit of fun trying to pick out which of that's real and what of it's not. But I was reading about Devin Singletary earlier today. They say he's looking good. And he was a pick of mine from a couple of seasons ago. A really, really, really late guy. I was proud to get in the late round. So. You know, that's really interesting you bring up Singletary because I was thinking about him when you were talking about this putting on weight thing. I have him in this college league we're in, and I totally keep up on him, and I was totally thinking about Singletary. That's funny you you said that. Yeah, like, I, I like him. He's 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 catches the ball, he runs with the ball, and he had some really good games his rookie year, and then they went out and immediately drafted Zach Moss. They, they got Moss now, that's right. So it's a little question mark there, but he's at least a one or two. I think yeah, in that system, I, I would say so. I, especially in the league where you only have people for four years, I think he's a really solid contributor. And I like Buffalo. I hope that Cole Beasley either <laughs> goes somewhere else, like he's threatened to do here lately, just because I think Buffalo would have a nice young lineup if they started, you know, Moss and Singletary. And I like Gabriel Davis, who I have on Appalachian. I think he's, I think he's going to be a stud. He had some really nice games last year and had a really big season. I was kind of disappointed. When they went out and got Emmanuel Sanders, because I wanted Davis to take a majority of targets. I think he's. I yeah, you know that that's also sport. funny. These teams that like overcrowd a position when they seem to have some leads. Like I noticed that about Baltimore. They, they, they just keep adding wide receivers, and they and they got a high profile guy last year, Brown. Uh, Brown and drafted. yeah, it's just weird how they just keep they drafted another one this year. So I I don't know what to make of it really sometimes. Seems like they could have went another direction. They've got some guys with talent. Why would you add yet another guy? I think they're really just trying to jumpstart that offense somehow, some way. I mean, they were they were really great two seasons ago. And Lamar Jackson was the MVP candidate. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about him in Georgia in a little bit. But oh yeah, it's it's hard to imagine that that offense could have tanked that badly in in a season. And they they've moved on from some running back backs and things like that ingram's gone and so i think they're really just trying to repool that offense and throwing anything at it that we'll, see it we'll, well they looked unstoppable two years ago so i think that they have what it takes there so i guess maybe that's why they grabbed another wide receiver perhaps i know that brown's a little undersized uh you know it's five nine i believe so yeah, you got brown who's, who's kind of a speed merchant guy a little undersized he gets hurt like a lot too he's got feet problems that's not a good thing for a wide receiver yeah, that, that, can, that can really take you out, out of your game and out of, out of your season. You know, it's a short season already in the NFL. You miss six games, and that's a, that's a big chunk of your year. But I like I like Bateman in that in that offense. He's a big physical guy who can jump up and get those 50-50 balls, and he, he has he has enough speed. He doesn't have a lot of speed, but he's got enough speed to be a really solid playmaker. I think he can be a, a potential breakout candidate in that offense this year because he's just so physical, has a good catch radius. Can bring down those 50 50 balls and Lamar Jackson needs some help. I mean, yeah, he's 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 dynamic with the ball in his hands, he can run and he can throw, but he's not as accurate as as some of the, the bigger names, at least in my opinion. Yeah, he did. He had, he had a drop off last year. It, so, um, moving along, I just wanted to talk about the top four in our league here because there is a lot of good young players associated with these teams, especially in the first three rounds of the draft. So, this might be helpful. There's some fantasy owners out there that might be listening in and. I'm looking right now at the um, the results from the semifinal round, and man, those were two close games. I see here you beat Georgia by just two points. You went on to win the championship with App State. You won by just two points in that game, and then in the other game, New Mexico Ohio State, another two point game, and then the uh, final round, of course, was kind of a laugher for both teams. It was a, kind of a blowout, but man, that semifinal round was tight. Yeah, it really was. Those are four even, evenly matched teams, and. I will forever remember Benny Snell for his performance in that game, even though he's probably going to be cut or, <laughs> or something. You know, right, yeah. Be out of the league in a year or two. But uh, 
Well, isn't that typical, though? That's what happens. Like, coaches, you never know who's going to come out and have the big game. That's why I like best ball because, you know, you you can't guess what these coaches are thinking, and it's so frustrating to start a guy who just isn't in the playbook that week, you know, to start him in a normal league. That's why I'm really into best ball, especially in the college format because so many guys are developmental still, and it just makes it a lot more fun. You just It's all about scouting, and then you reap the benefits of good scouting. For sure, that scouting really pays off in a best ball league like this where you're bringing in young players who may not be featured every week but can can have some big block games and kind of come of age, and yep. you get to reap the rewards of that because if you're trying to make a lineup in a, in a league that's that's thinner like that, you're really going to miss some big games. So I, I do enjoy the fact that it's best ball. For sure. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of throw you a curveball here and see, see if you're prepared. But if you had to pick one of those four teams to emerge as a champion, maybe you could start by telling me a little bit about – that team will start with those guys. We could do that, yeah, for sure. Well, obviously, I think New Mexico, but you know, I have my eye on Ohio State right. as a potential winner here. Um, it is a it's a toss up because Georgia looks strong too. I think right now, I have up. Oh, what do we got? Okay, this is New Mexico. I'm looking at their roster from last year. So, you know, New Mexico made a lot of noise last year. Well, they really come from the middle of the pack and, and seeming themselves as an early right. favorite. Right, no, from the sure. very bottom he came up and just, you know, he scored, of course, with that running back signing of James Robinson. Robinson led the whole backfield. Yeah, like he, he came in and was a dynamic playmaker and had some big games. He averaged about five points a game last year, I think, if memory serves me right. Yeah. Have, have, he had cleared a, a really thousand strong... yards rushing, um, had 344 in receiving. Uh, that's that's he... pretty strong. Do you think he stays there with Etienne? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, he's the veteran. He's the proven guy. And Etienne is, what, aren't they thinking about using him as a, pa- a pass catching back more? They were even talking about lining him up at wide receiver. Yeah, Etienne is, is a little bit more versatile and it's going to take on maybe some different roles. But I'm always concerned when it's a, a guy who came out of nowhere and against somebody that they've made right. such a significant. And they were in chaos last year, right? Because they turned their back, you know, the name and lose me again. I mean, I just haven't had my head in football for a week. I look once in a while, but i got to admit, you know, dog days of summer, baseball trades. I just went through a flurry of trades, and I kind of lost track of first names especially, but that's why I have the rosters up. Yeah, they lost somebody last year. Um, Wait a minute. Yeah, the Jaguars. Yeah, they uh, let Fournette go. That's it, Fournette, yeah. And so James Robinson kind of benefited from that. And so maybe you're right. You know, Etienne is the big high-profile draft pick. Maybe he takes over now, so... Yeah, they might not be able. To, they might not get the same season from Robinson. So then somebody like yeah, Gus Edwards, Naheem Hines, and J.K. Dobbins. Dobbins could step it up a bit because Baltimore has you know definitely wants to develop him, and he didn't have half a bad season. And I read earlier somewhere that Harris, even with all the moves that New England's made, they're committed to featuring him this year. And I really liked Harris. I had him in another league and. When he was given the ball and Apple opportunities, he just made big plays. Yeah, he'll you probably, know. they probably will. I know that they just picked up um, uh, Ramonde Stevenson, but I think they're probably going to use a year to develop him. That's kind of the Patriots' MO. That's the way they go. You know, the guy comes in and he doesn't right away get to make, a, make an impact because they do have a pretty crowded backfield. So, yeah, could be right on on that one. So he, he's still in really great shape in New Mexico in the backfield, even if Robinson. Just plays exactly a little bit, a little bit lower level position than he did last year. He's not gonna be hurting. He's got some several guys. That right, are he's got four guys. Well. Any given day, any given Sunday, can have a big game, and it's best ball. So I see no problem. Even if Robinson isn't the same guy he was last year, they'll still have a a sound running game. I think. So you know, I think they're they're a contender for that reason. The other reason would be Jamar Chase coming in. Yeah, Jamar Chase was my favorite pick as far as just front-line talent, although the wide receiver position at Cincinnati is crowded. They say they're not going to force the ball to any one position. I still think that Chase is going to be the dominant playmaker of that group. I For just sure. like No, he's what, got the highest – I mean, from my scouting reports, he has the highest rating of of all the players combined, like better than Najee Harris. Uh, the only people that outscore him in rating would be quarterbacks. I mean, he yes. scores like a 90 out of 100, uh, according to my scouting. Yeah, I had him as the number one. As the number one. Oh, he's player. obvious. He's hands down number one. I think. Yeah. Yeah, if you're just going on, on potential for 
break out that position, especially early on. And he also took uh, the Brown kid, St. Brown from Detroit, yeah. that could could see some could see some volume and volume. Yeah, there's a lot like of guys talking. in Detroit. They drafted another guy that I got, and um, they also have a new quarterback who I'm not very fond of, being a Rams fan. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? I mean, here's the the problem with, um, you know, it's, it's so sad right now. My mind is just like scrambled. I worked really late last night. But the problem with the, the former Rams quarterback, refresh me. Golf. Yeah, you know, it's a funny thing. He's been on the team for a few years, and I always forget his damn name. For I've never been able to remember his name. I'll have to think about it. Who's our quarterback? Jared jo- Goff. Goff. Well, he made it easy a couple of seasons for you. <laughs> I think he had, yeah, the year before when they went to the Super Bowl, there was just a great offensive line, and that really helped him. I watched him, and I realized that the guy really needs protection. And when the Rams couldn't protect him uh, last year, uh, they started moving the, him in the pocket, and then they would get more success because that would buy him the time. But they had to move him. They had to move him in the pocket to make it happen. And then the problem is, is he holds the ball too long. He tries to let big plays develop rather than just getting rid of it faster. So that results in in fumbles and just yeah. like getting sacked and just, you know, end of drives. I mean, so the guy just has a problem making quick decisions, in my opinion. He wants the big bomb. He wants the big play all the time. So Detroit, they're going to find out. They better protect him or it's not going to be pretty. Well, this league, you better go through your progressions pretty quickly because you've got some really talented players on both sides of the ball, and those guys are not going to give you much more than three seconds. <laughs> no, exactly. You have roughly four seconds in the pocket. I, When I was a defensive back playing a lot of cl- um, flag football, I always counted to four in my head when I was you know, covering my man because I didn't want to just sit and look in the backfield. My guy would run by me, so I was always yeah. counting to four. And I figured at four seconds, that ball is either out or that guy is on the run or is sacked. Or they ran the ball or something else happened. But four seconds, roughly, or less, is what you have. That's right. Yeah, so he – I think he has some potential to do well in Detroit, but I don't I don't look for him to be a breakout by any by any stretch. Any stretch. Yeah, but he so, could – Oh, go ahead. He could, I was just going to say, he could still be a good enough talent to get enough volume out there to where that pick pays off for Phil. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I have, gosh, yeah, it'll be interesting, actually. Yeah, they have a pretty crowded um, wide receiver group, but it's all up in the air there. So, um, you like Amon Ra St. Brown. Okay, interesting. What I did was I just kind of wrote down the top three picks for each team this morning and looked them over mostly. And so I'm a little unfamiliar with the lower picks right now. But, um, what is it you like about Amon Ra St. Brown again? You like, I mean, you didn't really elaborate. I just like his potential for volume there at that pick. You know, I think I had him as the as the number nine with a receiver overall coming out of the draft with potential for volume there. And I think he could just take advantage of the fact that I think Detroit will still throw the football. They have Swift, so obviously they'll they'll have the ability to run some, but I don't see them changing their offense overnight. So I really think he will just get a lot of volume, which makes him a potential in this league to take home some points. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, there he is. Okay, I found him here. Yeah, he's uh, 6'1", 195. I like the size. You know, not too bad there. Yeah, he could work out for them. I'm really hoping for the guy that I picked up. Who did I get? I'm going to look at that real quick. we got to move on. To the, oh, Sage Surratt. He never got drafted, which was weird to me. Because I had him scouted as a pretty, you know, like top 10 guy. And so I feel like he's going to be some competition for, for St. Ra, um, Amon Ross St. Brown. But who knows? Yeah, it's, it, it's early. We'll, we'll still see some preseason games and see some see some uh, snaps, hopefully, and get to make a more informed decision on And one guy I really like, like and... actually, when I'm looking at New Mexico's roster here, is Deontay Johnson. I liked him before he broke out with the Steelers. Because it always seems like the Steelers have that guy, that speedy guy who's kind of like a hybrid running back wide receiver. We all remember what, you know, the other Brown did before, um, what was his name? The Brown that played for the Steelers and got in trouble and and went from the top of the game right out of the football. Yeah, oh, um, begins with an A. No, yeah, Antonio Brown. That's right. Antonio that's right. Brown. Antonio Brown. Yeah. Yep. And Deontay Johnson is replacing him in that offense, in my opinion. He almost got a thousand yards last year, 
And uh, 85 catches, I mean, I think that he, he's going to even improve upon that. You think he'll stay healthy? That I don't know about. I haven't really looked into his health. So he has some issues with health, I, I guess. I didn't know that. He, he's, uh, he got nicked up a couple of times last year. All right. Yeah, well, that makes sense so. that due to his size, you know, that happens. And I think Antonio Brown might have been a pretty tough guy because he was like 5'10", and he survived. But, yeah, that will get you in football. You're running those middle routes, seam routes, and you're going to get hit. Yeah, those um, guys twice your size can, can take a toll For sure. on you. Being covered by the strong safety sometimes, the linebacker's there to hit you. I mean, the first guy holds you up so the linebacker can take you out, you know? Yeah, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, well, that's, you know, that, he did add a great uh, top wide receiver there in Ch Lamar, Jamar Chase. So I like their chances yeah. there because of that. They have a great running game. Uh, they have a decent tight end in Hayden Hurst. Defensively, one guy I look at here, Jonathan Allen on the line, looking pretty good. But actually, Trey Hendrickson, too. I mean, this guy, they have two strong pass rushers at linebacker, like one leader. Go ahead. I like Hendrickson. He had a kind of a breakout season last year. And he was on my waiver wire pickup that I, I missed out by a pick or two. Okay, yeah, 12 and a half sacks is a pretty darn good season. Yeah, he, he has a chance to create some, some disruption in the backfield and get back there and make some plays. And a league like this, all you need is a game where you got two sacks, and all of a sudden your defensive lineman's up around three, three and a half points, and that's a big advantage. For yeah. Sure. Well, so yeah, you, if you can score, I know a defensive line doesn't score a lot of points, but there's like most of the defensive linemen are kind of mediocre in scoring in the 20s. But if you get a guy who scores in the 30s and 40s, all of a sudden that that is a major advantage. So those guys can't totally be overlooked, especially if you're in a league where you use individual defensive players. And I can't imagine playing in a league where we use entire defenses. That just drives me nuts. I, I think that's so boring. I've, I've been a big fan of individual defensive players for a long time. It's one of the things I always liked about score sheet. And if yeah. I'm really a big fan of the Yahoo leagues and yeah. things like that. I would play them with friends just because. They're right, team games. defenses. Yeah. It's so stupid. It's like we know so much about football these days. We have such access to information. There's no reason guys can't figure out defensive players, individual defensive players. Yeah, I mean, if you're watching the games every week, you know who's good and who isn't. You see them make the plays. You, know, you, know, you should know who to pick. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't, shouldn't be a struggle. But I really like Devin Bush on that, the, the transfer oh, for sure. Devin Bush is outstanding. I can't believe he – yeah, he'll have a breakout year. He had injuries last year, but he was a high pick um, a year ago. And, yeah, there's no doubt that was a great pick, I think. Yeah, so yeah, a linebacker, a chance to really uh, score some at, at that position, comes in and, and kind of snuffs that guy in the transfer draft. So Phil doing more work in the transfer draft. Seems like he does the some of his best work in the transfers and the – and the uh, supplemental drafts in season. Right. Right. And he picked up Nick Bolton. Bolton's a strong pick up there. And the, I think it was the third round pick. And going to Kansas City, a defensive minded team. Uh, you know, I think that New Mexico is going to improve there at linebacker a little bit this year. Some of these guys get better. Devin Bush comes up from an injury year. Nick Bolton joins. They, they, they're strengthening themselves in areas where they look semi weak based on last year's numbers. So that will be a plus. Of course, only three defensive backs, but they're all decent. Nobody's really outstanding. But, you know, I guess his idea there maybe is to just do the waiver wire thing and pick up the hot hand, whoever's getting the playing time each week, and build his um, secondary through the season. If Abram's healthy, I still like Abram, although... Oh, yeah, he's outstanding. He's drafted a slew of defensive backs. I was like, great, and draft somebody else, you know. But, uh, you know, even though they drafted so many defensive backs, I still like Abram there as long as he's healthy and can play. Well, he's the starter, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, I mean, he, he did uh, he did lose a little bit of his luster last year just by not really wrapping up and just trying to make too many just big oh, okay. hits. Yeah, that'll that'll get you on the that'll put you on the bench a little bit with the coaches. That's true. You have to impress the coaches. You have to make your tackles. But the the thing I really like about New Mexico is their quarterback play is going to be outstanding with Kyler Murray. I right. He was, yeah, he You're a big fan of off. Kyler Murray. I could tell by the last thing we did. Yeah, I, I just think he's going to be the preemptive player at that position within the next two or three years. 
Although Mahomes, you can always say Patrick Mahomes is never going to lose that number one spot the way he looks, the way he plays right now. Right. But Mahomes doesn't have the same weapons he had You're two, right, yeah. three years ago this year. And I think Kyler Murray, who looked like an MVP candidate all the way up until he got banged up, and then he still played reasonably well despite you know a little bit of a slump as an overall team offense there for a couple of games. I still think, with the exception of that, of that small bump, those two or three games there, I think maybe it was Miami and Detroit that he played poorly against. If memory serves me correctly, but on that little short stretch where the offense slumped in general, he was putting up big numbers. And you're talking about a, a quarterback who can run with the ball, who can have 100 yards rushing and 300 yards passing in the same day. Well, that'd be a nice score, day. Yeah, score two touchdowns on both sides of the on both sides. Yeah, well, and obviously that's, that's okay. So they lost Watkins, obviously KC did. But what do you think about Cornell Powell? Just to get sidetracked for a second, Cornell Powell out of Clemson. Uh, I mean, is he going to be able to you know replace that uh, Watkins role? I really think they're going to give Hardman a chance. I really think they'll give Hardman Miko a chance. Hardman, he has been such a disappointment for the last two years. I've been making bets on him and losing every time. Yeah, he hasn't really he hasn't really given anybody a lot to get excited about, but they seem like they're they're going to give him a chance, and they really like this Byron Pringle kid, which was, I don't know how many people actually saw him play last year, but he looked good. I mean, he was a, a very marginal prospect, but uh, and he got hurt after only a couple of games. But he had a couple of really nice games there. I wish I had the numbers in front of me from last year. But uh, I think Pringle could be a third wide receiver there who could, you know, play him for a good offense, see a little bit more volume, could really step up and do some big things. I'm not going to say Powell is, is not going to get the opportunity because they did invest, invest something in him. But uh, I think he's going to have to – kind of show his way past those two guys. He's going to have to really outperform. Well, yeah, he's Pringle. a rookie, so he's going to have to prove himself. But I, I watched the film on him, and he looked pretty uh, pretty decent there at Clemson. I, I realize that he could disappear at times too, but he looks to be an, a goal line option, like, you know, a touchdown guy because he's big, strong, but he's also pretty decent at, you know, breaking out of a route and, and breaking tackles. He looked pretty tough to me. You know, any any time you any time you score a touchdown. You well, know, no, I mean Cornell Powell midfield too. I mean he gets the ball and he is hard to bring down. He is a very. If you watch the film on him, you'll see that he's. Uh, I don't want to play it right now because that's my team and I'm trying to focus on on the top four. But uh, yeah, we'll get around to him. I think Powell is somebody that people should have on their radar at least. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at Pringle here right now. I'm looking at the. I'm going to look at the game log and let's have a look here. So he. You said he had some. Well, he had a big game in week seventeen, four catches for thirty-two yards. You might have saw one game that really popped your eyes, but I'm not seeing a lot of big, big games here. 160 yards receiving on the season, on 13 catches. But you know, yeah. Let, let me let me go back and look at that. I, I'm, trying to what, I'm trying to remember what week that he got. That he got. I early. think it was the last week, maybe of the season. It seems like that's the big game he had on the year. But, um, you know, one other guy I wanted to mention before we moved on from New Mexico. Oh, okay, I moved away from New Mexico's page. Hold on. Is the tight end they drafted. Uh, I think it's Pat Fryermuth. Is that how you say it, I wonder? Yeah. Um, he was he was a nice pickup, I think. He was going to be a solid player. I wanted him, actually, and he picked him the same day that I was going to pick him. So that was who yeah. I was targeting. And I had him down as the number two tight end behind... Kyle Pitts so you know who knows he's going to uh, Pittsburgh who notoriously has a pretty productive tight end yeah I think he was consensus at two there just behind uh, the, the big the, man uh, the big man Pitts yeah yeah I think he was definitely the locked in for number two prospect there so he's he's got a lot of talent on that roster I don't really see glaring holes other than maybe just a lack of depth at defensive back, which is going to be super easy to fix. Yeah. With the way that the depth of defensive back is in season, you can, you can go out and find some defensive backs in week one or two. They're going to put you up some points. Oh yeah. And they're in defensive back is kind of a dime a dozen. Really. It's like most of them score pretty well. So you don't really need to spend too much capital unless you really like a guy. But, yeah, I'm putting up a video of Kyle Pitts right here just, you know, for the viewers to see something. And, uh, yeah, I really like Kyle Pitts. And at that at that note, we could probably move on to Georgia, who I also think could take it this year. They came darn close last year. They almost took you out, right? 
Or was it Ohio right. State? Yeah, they almost took you out last yeah. year. And it could have been a very different ending if they would have won that game. For sure. I mean, if, if they win that game, they're probably up there at the top. And then they, they got a choice of, of who they want to take. And they could have went with either Chase or Lawrence. I'm not sure. So they would have played New Mexico, who scored 47 points. Actually, as it turns out, they would have went to the final, and they only scored 39 in the Cotton Bowl, which was, you know, the final round for us. They scored. Oh, so New saying. Mexico would have won the title if it hadn't been for you beating Georgia by two points. So they probably would have went for sure with uh, with Lawrence because that uh, Chase would have probably still went still went number one <laughs> to uh, back to New Mexico. I'm sure that would have been the case. And New Mexico certainly did well with their wide receiver. You know, uh, gosh, there's so much to go over. It's like who do they lose, right? I mean, I could go through the information. I should have wrote it down, maybe. I mean, I could look it up right now, but this league is also about, you know, graduations. You lose right. talent every year, so things can change just based on that. And I I cannot remember who New Mexico lost last year. I was trying I was trying to think back if there was any, any big graduation. I don't think they lost today. a lot, honestly. I think that they pretty much retained most of their talent from last year. They might have lost some guys on defense. But, you know, offense is the higher scoring position. So, yeah. But anyway, I mean, Georgia, you got Kyle Pitts here. I know you were saying uh, a while back we were talking and you were saying that, you know, they might basically he's going to have to develop or something in Atlanta. But I beg to differ. I feel like he's so talented that he's going to be just like an Evan Ingram. He's going to be an impact player right from the start. I I really, I really don't think Kyle are – are going to be huge breakout players to start. To start really? Like, Kyle uh, Pitts? I mean, and you, have I, you seen this guy? He's a beast. I, I love him. I think he's. I think it was a great pick. He I looks like a wide receiver in his in his routes. He cuts like a wide receiver. And yeah, most I tight think, ends don't do that. They run a straight line up the, sem, uh, the seam. They kind of make a little little juke move or something and reach up and get the ball. Uh, Zach Hurts yeah. makes a practice of that. You know, he's nothing special with his breaks, but he gets that ball. But this guy. It's like, a, and I noticed that about Evan Ingram the year he came out. The breaks is what got me, and that's why I drafted him in score sheet because I was like so impressed with how he moved. He moved like a running back almost, and that's something that I look at when it comes to tight end because that's something that a, a linebacker can't defend. I think I think he's going to be a star. Don't get me wrong. I think he's going to be a star. But <laughs> right. Even if you look back at Kittle's rookie year, can you tell I like Kyle Pitts? <laughs> I, I, I know, I, and, and for all all the, all the right reasons, he's, he is going to be. A huge player. I think they did really well, and I would have, I would have probably drafted him as well if I'd been in their shoes right there. But I just think that you know, forty-eight, six, thirty-four with uh, two touchdowns was Kittle's rookie year, and I think that's a fair, right, a fair, a fair comparison to make. You know, so you're looking at fifty yards a game, and right. you know, maybe four catches, three catches, three or four catches, fifty yards, right. and. And a, and a TD thrown in here or there. But um, tight end is a low scoring position across the board just because of the lack of depth in, in this format. Right. It's so, just like defensive line. But the thing about it is if you get a special one, it is a true advantage because so many people are mediocre at the position. And if you're a superior, if you're putting up like wide receiver style numbers at the position, like linebacker or defensive yeah. line is never going to put up wide receiver numbers. But like, you know, if a tight end can put up linebacker numbers, that's, oh, yeah, that's pretty that, strong. That's a huge advantage. I'm, I know yeah. I'm, I'm weak at Appalachian, who was in this conversation, you know, as, as one of the top teams coming back after after doing so well last year. But um, there's nothing there. The cover's really bad. Right. So yeah, a team like Georgia has. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna totally get you because you have to have one tight end in your lineup. And one of the things I also like about best ball and the flex position is that. You could have a two tight end offense in this league. So just because you already have a dominant one doesn't mean you can't get another one. And the reason I, I, I'm okay with that is because I remember I remember those New England teams. Yeah, I, I think that's a... You can run a two tight end offense and win in the NFL. Yeah, the Rams did that. The Rams did that. Yeah, Rams and those guys were both unknowns. Concepts. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they did it. Because that, that the, the quickest, I mean, the, the shortest pass is up the middle. And it's the pass yeah. that the quarterback can make with accuracy if he can get a lane to throw in. So it makes sense. If you've got a guy in the seam, you know, you can make a living on that. And you know, the funny thing is you mentioned the Rams. Back in 99, 2000, when they won the Super Bowl, 
A lot of their passing game was right up the middle. Isaac Bruce, right up the middle. He cut towards the middle, and the pass was right down the middle. And that is that can be very effective. Speaking of weapons in the middle of the field, I, I know we just got done talking about Pitts, but I really do like Fant. I think he's going to be a major contributor this year. Who is this again? Denver. Fant out in Denver. The oh, end. okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Noah Fant, yeah. Yeah, the other tight end for, for Georgia. Yeah, he was really right. had some nice games last year and was a breakout candidate and really yeah. played super well. And if that offense comes around and Sutton's healthy and, and Locke takes a step forward, yeah, as well as you know, you got Judy out there, I still think he's going to get his fair share. Oh, he of should. He should. He's a, he's a seam runner, and and that's very valuable to a quarterback. And you know, Drew Locke's a taller guy. He's tall enough, so I would expect him to love his tight end. Yeah, for sure. And they were really strong at running back. They had Montgomery, Carsons, and Edlair. And so I'm wondering if you think there'll be a step back out of any of those three or if you think they'll look just as good this year. Now, that is, that's a very diverse running attack, and they're all strong. So Carson may be a step back. Um, it's hard to say. Hilaire, I would expect to do better. I like Hilaire. I think I think he will do better this year as well. He's probably my favorite out of the three, if I had to pick a favorite. Yeah, Montgomery, you know, I never really look. It's funny, he's the leading scorer here, but I never really look at him that close, and maybe I should be looking at Montgomery a little closer and giving him some respect. He went over 1,000 yards, almost 400 yards receiving. Yeah, he's pretty strong. He really had a, he had a nice finish to the year. A lot of touches, yeah, only right. one fumble. One fumble that he lost, and, you know, that's just one fumble. Total. Some guys fumble a lot and don't lose too many of them. But his whole time, his whole lineup here. Actually, I'm looking at the linebackers or the Zeke running backs. One fumble. By the way. What's that? Zeke Elliott's cringing somewhere. By the way, as you talk about ball security issues. I'm, oh yeah, yeah, right, right, right. No, that's something I look at big time with a running back. It's like you got to secure the ball. You know, again with the Rams. I'm a Rams fan. You're going to have to hear about the history of the Rams. But the big Achilles heel in the '80s for them was Eric Dickerson. Great running back. I love him. He's still my favorite player of all time. But man, key moments in playoff games, he would fumble the ball. I don't know if a lot of people know that about him, but Dickerson would cough it up when we really needed him to not cough it up. Right. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Some, there's some talented backs who struggle with that. Thurman Thomas is my. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe that's why the Bills never got over, you know. I mean, I remember Tiki Barber. That was an issue for him. And then I remember that when Coughlin said, carry the ball higher. And then all of a sudden he stopped fumbling. So sometimes it's a fundamental thing. I know Dickerson liked to carry the ball like a loaf of bread. It's so easy to get punched away. Yeah, and because he's so fast and big, I think he just thought, ah, I'm just too much of a cool guy. I can, But, you know, they would get him sometimes, and, and it always happened when we really needed it to not happen. In playoff games, like they're playing the Redskins in one, and I remember we were in the game. We had a chance, and I think this is the one the Redskins beat us like 19-7, to and right. he fumbled it. We were making a drive. We were about to take the lead. It was in the third quarter or something, and then he coughed it up around, you know, on the other – on the on the Redskins side of the field, and that was the game. The Redskins took over. They got a touchdown. They ended up taking that one, and so that's really important to me. Fumbles, for sure. Ball security issues. I mean, I've lost score season. sheet games because of fumbles. I oh, seriously, no. it's come down to just like two point games. It's like if that guy hadn't fumbled, I win the game. Right, so you know, sure. it it matters even in our league. You know, which is a score well, sheet style cost league. You. It should cost you, you know. That's, that's a, and that's it should. That's why league. I like score sheet. Exactly. It should cost you because that's important. Fumble sixes and things like that. You know, those things are, like, important. That You not only fumbled and turned the ball over, but you gave an instant six points. I mean, yeah. That should be what counted think, against you. What do you think are going to be your keys for Georgia here becoming the champion this year? Well, I would say somebody has to emerge – on the defensive line, perhaps. I know they got Aziz Ojolari. I like him. He looks strong, but he is a rookie, so I don't expect him to become a leader right away. So maybe development on their on their defense a little bit. Um, they do have a star in Fred Warner, but, you know, some other guys are still, you know, they, they should have a couple of good linebackers. Nobody's scoring. There's only one guy in the 30s, and the next guy down is in the 20s. You know, to give you a perspective, Fred Warner has 50 points. You know, maybe a little more strength on defense. Uh, the secondary is as good as anybody's. Not as good as anybody's, but adequate. So, you know, they need to get 
a little better on defense, perhaps. Maybe tight end play. Pitts has a good year to go with Thont. And wide receiver yeah. could be huge for them. Uh, they they did pick up Terrace Marshall, who I'm not totally sold on. And uh, there's no stars here on on the on the wide receiver group. I like I like uh, Brandon IQ. I'm, yeah. I'm still saying his name, but I, I know I I know it's a tough one. Ayuk is how I say it. I don't know. I, yeah, <laughs> but uh, he he was looking good towards the sure. uh, the end of the he season. He was a surprise last year. I didn't expect him to have that kind of year. Brandon. So, Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was just gonna say I think if if he has some more development, that would be one key. And I think the biggest thing is gonna be Lamar Jackson. I know he put up nine points per game last year, so that's still pretty solid. But think about only two years ago being the the MVP of the league and having such a huge season. If that offense gets back on track and Jackson reverts to the player he was two years ago and not a year ago, even if he's the player he was a year ago, they're gonna be in, in the hunt. But if he's the player that he was two years ago, I think they become early favorites. Because I still think that even with Damian Williams in Chicago, I think Montgomery is going to get every chance to be the lead back. Chris Carson has injury issues, and he's had a little bit of ball security issues at times. But Seattle, you know, if he stays with Seattle, I think they're going to be – he's going to be the lead back there. He should be. Uh, yeah, Edwards Alaire. You know, you talk about losing weapons on the outside in Kansas City. If he becomes a focal point of the offense, you know, he could be just one of those Priest Holmes kind of guys who just absolutely you know, pairs up fantasy. You saw that before out of Kansas City. They, you know, right. The backs who, who catch oh, yeah. the ball and Some run the ball. Some teams just produce good running backs usually, and Casey is one of them for sure. Uh, so, the only thing I had against Ayuk was Arizona State. It just seems like nobody ever succeeds from Arizona State, but he surprised me. So I might have sold him short. He's probably better than I thought. But but on that note about KC, I remember back, man, the names are going to elude me, but in the in the 2000s, they had, God, what is it? Oh, boy. I cannot remember, but uh, they had a guy who was tearing Koye. it up. What's that? Uh, oh, 2000s. Uh, Koye was way earlier. Koye was in the 90s. Yeah. In the 2000s, they had a guy who was tearing it up, and I remember trading him. And everybody was like, are you crazy? But I was like, no, you watch. He's going to get injured. And I picked up the backup. And sure enough, he, who is this? It was the running back before Priest Holmes. They had a really dynamic running back before Priest Holmes because Priest Holmes was kind of 2.0. I can't remember who that other guy yeah, was. Yeah, but there was this guy. He was, in the, he was the leader. And I remember trading him, and a friend of mine was like, are you crazy? And sure enough, I was dead right. I picked up the backup, and the backup turned out to be the big sleeper. Because the guy who was starting and tearing it up, he got hurt. And I kind of made that bet because I was like, you know, I've seen this before. Guys get hurt. And KC, it's always next man up. And right. so you got, you know, that's a good strategy for any of you fantasy ballers out there that don't know better is look at those backups because it's next man up. And if, if the running attack is good, it's probably because the offensive line is good. And that's probably why running backs don't always get paid the best. Even though they're right. putting up bomb numbers, you're thinking, this guy's worth millions. No, nah, sorry. It's the line that's doing it. And the next guy that comes in is going to do pretty good, too. So that's why they don't pay these guys. We had Jamal Charles and Larry Johnson. Those, those Yeah, those Larry guys. Johnson was the guy I had. Yeah, okay, that was it. And I remember everybody was, like, shocked that I traded him. And um, I got a good deal for him, too. It was in score sheet. And um, I can't remember. You know, it's so long ago. But I remember I did well on that one. You know, I have my moments. <laughs> I've actually yeah. done better in fantasy football than in, I do in baseball. Uh, baseball, I'm competitive, but injuries get me, uh, slumps. I, I just never seem to have enough of something. And, yeah. Yeah, baseball is about starting pitching. It really is. It I'm is, yes. Track, yeah, it's big. Yeah, and those arm injuries can really, really train wreck us. Right, I know. As soon as a guy leaves the game with that damn forearm, sore forearm, you're like, oh, next thing, okay, it'll be only about a week from now, he's going to be on the IR. You watch. Sure enough, he's going to have Tommy John surgery now. The old two, forearm Two years thing. later. <laughs> yeah, no, it yeah. doesn't take any time. As soon as they have a forearm thing, they leave with forearm tightness. It's like the it's the, the kiss of death. Yeah. He, the I season's, hate reading season's that one, man. It's like, oh, crap. It's over. Okay, who do I have? <laughs> Yeah, scrounging for a fourth or fifth starter off somebody else's team. I'll trade you. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching but, Lamar uh, Jackson hi uh, highlights right now just to let you know, just to give everybody something to look at. You were talking about Lamar, and he is really the key to Georgia's season. 
if he has a big year, you know, they have enough pieces in place around him to, to really compete for this thing. Yeah, I think they do. I mean, you're going to get probably two running backs out of that group that are going to put up enough points to be starting. And Ayuk, who's probably going to be most a starter most every week, you get Marshall, who I don't know about because Carolina's so crowded already, but I do like his potential and his talent. You know, you could you could easily be in a situation where they only need one more wide receiver to step forward, and they're going to have loaded running backs, right. loaded tight ends. Yeah, I, I think they can. Uh, in this league, especially where the of course they've got a running back named there. Lamar Jackson too. Yeah, so yeah, <laughs> uh, he's one of these guys who can put up an extra, you know. Right, I mean, he's basically another week. running back on the field. In fact, his running name, his running numbers can out outdo most running backs. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, he's very athletic. The... I like that. You know, just the injury is the only thing that can really stop this guy. I think isn't this his senior season then? So this is it for Georgia. They gotta they gotta get over this year so that they can get that high draft pick next year and pick up the replacement for Lamar Jackson. But uh, dropping Gardner Minshew was a great idea because in the end he was able to re-sign him anyway. Yeah. And you know if they uh, trade Gardner. Gardner, he could end up. You know he somebody might take him at some point, and now you got two guys. And I don't know. I mean, yeah. I would redshirt Gardner Minshew if I was him, though, and uh, that way you have insurance next year. You know what I mean? Because you're losing Jackson, and then you're not going to have that that draft restriction, and you could still draft a top prospect at quarterback, and you have that one year where you have two guys who are capable. Yeah, that's that's one of the big things about New Mexico is being able to go back and get Hill, who has a, a nice situational role, even if he doesn't earn a, a bigger role. And that I was going to mention that at some point, never got around to it, but that's a big, another big reason to love New Mexico. But that would be a solid strategy here for these guys at Georgia is to let Gardner Minshew be a red shirt, and then you still have those four games throughout the course of the season if you need him for a game here or there, or want to take a chance on a, on a bye week when. When Jackson is out, yeah, you know, and and hope he gets some snaps, but I really think these guys is this is going to be a good year for them, and I really, I really do oh, hope, yeah. even even dropping Lamar Jackson and and having to face him, I really do hope he he rebounds and has a good season and and is a strong piece of these guys' success. I, yeah, I watching a, Lamar Jackson right now is just like comparing him to Joff in my mind. It's just amazing how different he is. It's. It's pathetic what Joff does. He just goes back there and, and he he just looks asleep back there sometimes. And Lamar is moving around, you know, looking for guys. He's making quick yeah, turns I mean, and then taking off with the ball or delivering a nice pass. It's like they got a real weapon there in uh, in Baltimore and Georgia in our league. That, that's a weapon. I mean, he's he's pretty strong. Yeah, it's the only thing that can limit this guy is his surrounding cast, I guess. And if his offensive line fell apart, you know, I know he can still run behind it, but it could get bad enough to where, you know, that could destroy anybody's game. But, no, Lamar looks pretty good. Yeah, they just need some continuity to that offense, and hopefully they find it this year. It seemed like they had players and pieces in place last year, but they never could get that offense together. Something something was always always missing. But hopefully it looks much better this season because two years ago it was unstoppable, and Jackson was an MVP quarterback, you know, so – I think he has the chance to do that again for these guys. And like you say, this could be a big year for them because you lose Jackson, you're back to drafting the rookie. I think this is Chris Carson senior year as well, right? Memory serves me. Could be. Um, I could check in on that. Chris Carson. And, and then uh, – He might be a junior, I thought, but – Is he a junior? Here. No, we'll all find out here. Yeah. Put the research department all that. Right, yeah, we'll get it up here. Good old, uh, you know, good old fan star man. They got a nice little feature there where you, you go to the left side, you click the little three horizontal bars, and then you can just type the name of the player into the search field. And yeah, Carson is a red shirt senior this year, so this is it. Yeah, so yeah, this is. Although you know Montgomery and Elair are going to be around for a little bit longer, this is. Oh yeah. This may be the. This may be the. Maybe their time. Yeah. That's the fun of this game here. You always have to plan. You never can just rest on your laurels here. You always have to be looking forward and making that scouting decision, getting that running back to replace a Chris Carson, and then you have a year, you know, to develop the guy. It's it's a lot of fun for me. I like the whole constantly planning. 
And speaking of uh, this being the season where things need to get done, I think this is really it for OSU, Ohio State. I All think right. This is the I think this is a big it's season. A good lead in. Yeah, we're, yeah, we need to get on to Ohio State here because I know Gerald is waiting for us to talk about his team. Yeah, hey, Gerald. I hope you're doing well, buddy. Gerald's uh, loving it, man. He loves the league. He's in, he's enjoying it. Yeah, but uh, I think this is because you got Mahomes. Right. This last last year of Mahomes, last year of Cook. Yeah, I know, I know they drafted. So um, you know what happened, too, was I think he redshirted Jalen Hurts last year. So that could be a snake bite because – so now Jalen Hurts can't be redshirted anymore, right? So next year, if he has a good year this year, which he probably will, he's in the top 14, he's going to create a restriction at quarterback. So now, even if he has a good year, he can't go out and get a top quarterback if he wants to keep Hurts. There's going to be a big decision to be made on Jalen Hurts, he, you know, because he's going to sure. be top 14. So if, if he has a good year, Ohio State does, which he should, Next year, it's like now he's looking at the top prospects. Do I keep Hurts and keep working with him, or do I sell him off and put him on transfer so I can pick up one of the new young guns? That's going to be an interesting right. uh, scenario, an interesting thing to play out this year. How well does Hurts play? It's going to make a pretty intriguing decision for Gerald. Yeah, Hurts, Hurts may not affect the results this year. He may not be the keys to this year's success, but I definitely think He's the key to the program going forward. Right, and in, and in this year, what he does, I think, is gonna is gonna determine a lot about what Gerald decides in the off season. Does he let him transfer, or does he not let him transfer? So if yeah, Hertz well, looks pretty good, yeah, I think he's hands down your guy. Yeah, I mean, Hertz was kind of a little Jekyll and Hyde, really great starting out, and then he had some really weeks weak. Weeks right. <laughs> at the end of the. He does have a bit of a problem of with fumbling. I'm seeing that there. There's nine fumbles here, two losses, just but nine fumbles. He's putting on the ground a lot. That's that's not good. I would be interested to see what his weekly points totals were as the season as his season Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I, I can I can get the game log here. <laughs> He's got those the, those point total game logs. Up. I'm, I'm interested to see how that. Uh, sometimes memory betrays you a little bit, but I was thinking. Oh, for sure. Super hot, and uh, it was a little bit, a little bit chillier. Even though he, I don't think that's necessarily an indicator that he's he pretty much kind of took over in week fourteen. Right, and he had seven points in week fourteen. Then he had a big game in week 15, 15 points, and then in week sixteen a strong game at nine points, nine and a half. So he threw right. for three forty two. He did throw a couple picks that week. Um, then week 17, a little lackluster. He only threw 20 passes. Maybe they pulled him out of the game for some reason. He did throw an interception there. So, you know, I mean, I think he showed enough to be worth, like, a flyer. So that's why I say this year is, like, a big year for Jalen Hurts to prove himself so that, you know, he can give Gerald a little clarity as to whether or not he needs to just move on and get one of the young guns. Because I'm sure that his team, Ohio State's going to do well. They're going to be. I think they'll end up in the top four. Yeah, I think I think he's got a really great squad here. I mean, you got Patrick Mahomes. You got Dalvin team. Cook here. You got Najee Harris coming in. Pretty good. I mean, the wide receivers. They got one guy. T. Higgins is a leader. Um, everybody else is kind of also Rands, but they're strong enough. But that's not a, a total strength. They're not like built like App State is built at wide receiver. Uh, yeah. You know, if you, if you're giving me. Uh, the most volatile team out of the top four. This will probably be it. I can easily see Maybe this so. team just just blowing away the competition this year, or I could see them being the one that drops back and and has that experience like we saw with uh, oh Oregon, or, yeah, who who was who who's Wisconsin was on, now? Yeah, on the Oregon's now slash Wisconsin was on the verge and then kind of fell back. Yeah. I mean, Hopefully, hopefully my home stays healthy. Has you know a great what that season. was? Was that was just lack of active ownership. The owner of that team was doing nothing, and um, that's why he's not with us anymore. Right. So I think that makes a big difference, and I don't, I don't see sure. Gerald sleeping at the wheel. So I think he's going to keep Ohio State in the game with his weekly pickups. The X factor with Ohio State appears to me to be the defense. I think it's Dalvin Cook. Well, no, I mean, there's no doubt about that. Dalvin Cook. I mean. You can never overlook him, but what I'm saying is his defense is really strong, and that would be the X factor in that a lot of teams overlook defense, like a lot of us look overlook it. But I'm looking at his defense is like Roquan Smith, 
Jerome Baker at linebacker, two high scorers. Um, strong front line, Brian Burns, Josh Sweat. Good enough, I mean, 43 points from a, from a defensive lineman. And then the secondary, you know, average. But well, I just, love the Davis pickup on the linebacker side. I think he's going to be a point scorer this year. And that adds another piece to already strong linebacker group. Jamin Davis, yeah, Jamin Davis. I think I have yeah. him down as, yeah, he's, he's pretty high ratings here. He gets high marks, yeah, for he sure. Was, uh, he was going to be my number one linebacker pickup. All right. Uh, Gerald beat me to the punch there, so uh, I didn't get a chance to, to take a selection on him. But back to back to the Dalvin Cook Cook thing. Like, this guy is has the chance to be the highest scoring running back in the league, bar none. I mean, when Cook is healthy and playing well, he catches the ball, he runs with the ball. He's a focal point of the offense. He puts up monster numbers. He, he's almost like a two running back. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's only the knee injuries. that I mean, that's the only thing that can limit him. I've, I've loved Dalvin Cook from his rookie season. In score sheet, I drafted him right away. Sure. And, you know, when everybody else was overlooking him, I, I watched the tape, and I was like, this guy's really fast and makes cuts. You no, know, I get it, man. He's, he's outstanding. So if he's healthy all season long, that's going to be big for them. So looking at it, looking at his track record and his history, that's a little bit a little bit of a question mark out there. And if, well, it's just um, the the knee. You know, he had that problem in college, and then it carried over to I think it was his rookie year. He had a problem. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna put up some highlights here while we're talking on Dalvin Cook. But he did have. He does have Najee Harris, who I, who I was big on and was thought was the number one running back coming out of the draft. So in Pittsburgh. Uh, a place that's going to run the ball. Yeah, we're going to have to look at some Najee Harris, too, before we end this thing here, but I'll maybe show a little bit of, of uh, Cook. I'm speeding through the, the short plays. I hate the goal line ones. I want to see the big runs. Here we go. Right. Here we go. Yeah, there's a good one. Yeah, he's pretty tough. You know, I just worry about his knee. You know, Dalvin Cook is outstanding. And then not. I think that's a great duo they got there, Najee Harris. You know Harris is going to be the guy in Pittsburgh from the from the get-go, right? Sure, I mean, they they made the way for him, and he they, they drafted him first round. I mean, yeah. Connor Connor's in Arizona now, looking like he's going to back up Edmonds. You know, so right, definitely. How can you bench a guy like Najee Harris? It's impossible. He's a he's kind of the size of an Eric Dickerson slash uh, Travis Henry, or not Tra- Derrick Henry, <laughs> Derrick Henry. Yeah. yeah. How many I mean, times I have I watched that damn one hundred yard run he did? That ninety nine yarder. Have you watched that a million times? Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic play. That was it's a great video, insane. man. I just can't get enough of that one. The t- the t- the three stiff arms. Oh my god, that was just a beast run. Yeah, he's he he's a talented talented guy, and I think that um, they have a chance if if he plays well and running backs can play well from the beginning. They don't take as long to develop as maybe a receiver or a tight end or for sure even a quarterback. These are young studs. They they they're using their youth because it's a tough position. You take a lot of hits. And they need young men who can just go in there and just, it's a workhorse position. And when you look at the wide receiver stable there, there has a chance to be some superstars in there. It's kind of kind of a, a wait and see. How many targets does T. Higgins get with a, with a healthy Joe Burrow and adding a Jamar Chase? You know, how does that affect him? Still got Boyd out there, Russell Gage, you know, is, Julio Jones is gone now. How does that affect him? How many... Is he going to get some extra targets? Is he going to look like a, uh, a yeah. number one or number two wide receiver? And Judy out there in Denver was gonna, was a big – Oh, yeah, Judy will come around, you know. I mean, they just got to figure out quarterback. They got to – hopefully Locke is the guy because they don't really have anybody else. You know, I don't see Bridgewater being this, the future. So I um, think they made a pretty big bet on Locke. I think, I think um, Bridgewater was brought in as kind of a pace horse. And they're yeah, hoping Locke turns out to be the guy. I think that's purely, you know, emergency time. If you go into Tay Bridgewater out in Denver, I've 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 just saw enough of Bridgewater. I don't think he's going to be the guy that takes you to the next level. Who gets you to the no, house. no. You know, he he's there to be a pace horse. He's there to to motivate Drew Locke into bringing out his A game. What was it? Drew Locke was wasn't he like um, SEC quarterback or what? Did he made. I can't remember. He set a record in the SEC, or he, out of Missouri, right? Yeah, and he, yeah. yeah, he had a big year in the SEC, and that's why he he was considered, you know, an NFL prospect. 
And, you know, we all know the SEC is a pretty tough league. So yeah, if you can play in the SEC. League. Yeah, you, you got a good shot at starting in the NFL if you can start there. Not that, yeah, you're, you're playing against that caliber competition every week, so. Yeah, I like Dalvin I'm, Cook. I'm, I mean, looking at these uh, highlights, he's definitely outstanding. Yeah, I watched a lot of Dalvin Cook by default last year. It seemed like I seemed like I got a lot of Vikings on my on my local program, and, and uh, I was not necessarily thrilled about them. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to see them see them pretty regularly. And Cook is uh, Cook's a guy. Cook's a guy. He's gonna put up points if he's healthy, and I think those are those are gonna be the key factors for for OSU is gonna be Dalvin Cook's health. The, how the offense does out in Kansas City as it recalibrates, and, and which of these young wide receivers can take a step forward. Because you mentioned his defense is is, is going to be an elite level defense, position by position. There's a, not any of the tight ends out there that maybe really make you think, "Wow, this is going to be a four point guy who wins me the league" kind of thing. But he's got enough talented tight ends to yeah. where he's going to get points out of that position every week. And he well, took heck, a young he was, guy. He was there tough too. to beat last year. I mean, you can't you can't say yeah. he wasn't tough to beat. Let's have a look. What was his record oh, here? Yeah. Uh, Ohio State eleven and four. And I'll and, pull and up his team from last year and check out his schedule. Easily could have been better. I think uh, I think he ended a, a Appalachian's unbeaten streak. If memory serves me right, I can't remember. If he was the team that took us out. Or I don't think he did. I think um, you. No, he did beat you. That's right. He beat you 47 to 42 in week six. And then he yeah. turned around and lost to Georgia in week seven. And then Oregon State has become another team. I can't remember who they turned into. I think they turned into Oregon this year. He, that was a weird one. It was probably a bye week for somebody. Right. He loses to no, Kentucky. Man. And Kentucky became Maryland now, I think. And he loses to yeah. New Mexico in week 15. Which was no a uh, no shame wait? That game. <laughs> what's that? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was the semifinal game. That's right. Uh, yeah. So yeah, he did beat you guys last year, but that was um. I can get the box score here. I just gotta click it. You know that they archived last season on the website, right? Yeah, I knew they did that. I didn't know how. Yeah, you can just go to 2020. It's down near the bottom of the page. You can click it. It's better on a PC, but you can go check out like everything uh, and that so we will be able to like do our research to figure out if somebody wants to redshirt someone and i can check their their um transactions and and redshirt them retroactively or whatever you know i mean it's a lot of work for me sometimes to keep track of everybody's moves so you just come and tell me basically guys tell me who you want to redshirt i'll go look at the transactions and figure out if you have made him inactive enough during that particular season to do it I usually know with the high profile players, but you know, sometimes there's a guy, I just, I don't watch it constantly. I, I have a job and I trade stocks. So, you know what I mean? My life is pretty busy and it, you guys are great owners though. So I know you guys help me out a lot. Like I know you guys are capable of pointing things out to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it should be a kind of a joint ownership project. Everybody For sure. It, I mean, so, we're all, yeah. we're all like, yeah, you know what it was, was uh, Tulane, he didn't have his quarterback that week. It was a bye week for Mahomes, and that makes sense why he loses that game, for sure. Yeah, that's. that's I'm gonna, you know, I, we talked about that too. I'm gonna try to avoid that this year. There's gonna be a couple games, unfortunately, where I think I'm not gonna be able to line up buys to where you know one team's gonna have their quarterback, the other team won't. It's just, it's unavoidable, really. But I'm gonna do my best. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think I think you can get most of them. And- You'll have one or two out there that might not match up. but You know, the thing is, is what's hard for me to decide is, like, who to choose. It's like, I mean, who should I do that to? Who should I cripple? You know, it's like, is the, the worst team, the, the, the team that's not as good, should they get the advantage? Or should the advantage go to the better team, you know, that deserves it because of their winning track record? You know what I mean? Yeah, Probably the winning track record. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, too. Because yeah. this whole league is all about rewarding success and not failure yeah so yeah, that, that's the way that's the way it goes in real yep. life even even with officiating i know it drives people crazy but right no no i'm not i'm no liberal i mean i do like some of the, the the things they do for us to help us like during covid giving us some money you know to get through i right. totally appreciated the unemployment but i mean what choice did i have you know i would work first that's my first choice but honestly i didn't want it i knew it was a bad thing but that's why i'm all about so what i'm saying is is yeah if i'm desperate i'll take it but 
I try not to be right. desperate. I try to earn my living. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, have we talked about AS Appalachian State yet? We, we did the last program. That's why I skipped over you at first because I wanted to go over some of these other guys. But, yeah, yeah we can get sure. back to you, man. Uh, yep, App State, the champions who maybe might have a, have a little problem repeating because Trevor Lawrence perhaps has to go through a learning curve. Maybe there's some injury issues. Maybe they don't start him all year. So I'm thinking that's your biggest sure. weakness. Yeah, like I love Lawrence. But I think, I think like you say, there is a chance that he doesn't play well right away or maybe it takes a little bit longer to get in the game. The last I heard, they're, they're talking more and more like he's going to be available early in the season, which is great news for me. Yeah. Uh, how, many point, how many points he puts up might, might be a different story. But just getting starting quarterback play is absolutely nice. You, that's all you really need in this league. I mean, just something from quarterback. If you're getting a zero, yeah, you're pretty much in a in a bad year. But if you're getting anywhere from six points and above, you have a chance to win. Absolutely, the quarterback play is is huge. I think um, Lawrence is capable of an eight or nine point year. You know, on average, and and hopefully, hopefully more as time goes by. That obviously you don't. Let Lamar Jackson go and invest the first pick if you don't expect better things as the season goes on. But I think he can definitely put up eight or nine points a week this year and keep us in contention. Chubb is going to have to stay away from injury, though. If Chubb goes down, that's that's going to cost us big time. He may be he may be more of a key than than Lawrence, just health wise, as long as you know everybody everybody's playing because he put up six points a game last year. He's going to be going off the board early in a lot of drafts this year. As I'm watching the ratings come back, he's, you know, they're expecting big things from him. But if he gets dicked up again, then uh, Keyshawn Vaughn's not getting it done. <laughs> we'll, we'll see what kind of role Michael Carter has out there. In- You're right. Yeah, Michael Carter, that, that, yeah, that was a, a little bit of a, a riskier pick maybe as a high pick, I thought. But I see, you know, you really feel pretty good about him. I, I know we talked about that last show. And you feel like he's going to dominate even. So, you know, I'll take your word for it. We'll we'll check back in mid-season and see how happy or elated I am or maybe sad and depressed. (laughs) It's going to be going to be uh, one of those after after we have enough to get a little bit of a jury out on how much he's going to be able to contribute. Yeah. Guys like him and maybe the guy that I was high on. um, uh, You know, it was uh, uh, Gainwell. Kenneth Gainwell, yeah. you know, maybe, the, you know, they're on the same cut. They're, they're kind of guys who can do certain things, like catch the ball out of the backfield and yeah. be a, a change of pace back. But they're not a, they're not your, your you know, bell cow guy, you know, the guy that's every not day. Harris. Play. Yeah, Najee Harris is a stud. And so, you know, that's what he has with Cook and Harris there in Ohio is a couple of studs. I'm watching Najee yeah. Harris highlights right now as we're talking about App State. And, yeah, I mean, so that's what I see with Carter maybe as, as a guy that's a lot like Gainwell. You know, he's got a lot of ability. Make some big plays here and come up big for you in some games, but maybe not a guy you can always depend on every game. Hard to say. For sure. Uh, the, the wide receivers are really the, the strength of this team. I think the wide receiver play is going to be strong, even even if, you know, you have a little bit of a problem here or there with a few nicks or, or bruises or, or somebody doesn't play quite up to potential. I think there's enough depth there to kind of cover that. But uh, tight end is a real weakness. We talked about that earlier. I mean, you've got uh, right now you're looking at Bryson Hopkins, which isn't even guaranteed a role, you know. Right. So, uh, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. he's definitely, I mean, yeah, you might be looking at two, you know, 20-some yeah. points from him for the season. Could be. I don't know. I mean, have the Rams, what are they? I mean, I should know this being a Rams fan, but what, do they let somebody go at tight end? Yeah, they uh, – they parted ways with the uh, tight end tandem they had there, and they are or Everett, I think, is the guy. They oh, Everett, go. okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, so, and they like to feature two tight end sets, but they also have the project guy that uh, they're saying good things about. Which kind of getting back to OSU was one of those guys that Gerald took a flyer on really late, who might end up getting the snaps there. Um, they really loved him. I'm trying to flip back down here and see if I can find that on Gerald's roster now because I can't remember his name. But, uh, yeah, I have that potential that he doesn't even get the get the spot there, although I liked him coming in as a, as a 
like a fourth or fifth round draft pick last year, a chance to develop. He was kind of that late supp- supplemental pick who I thought might get me get me something, but I'm probably going to be looking transfer draft that kind of thing to uh, to really add something to that position. Yeah, I'm looking right now at their depth chart. Yeah, I see um, Tyler Higby. Yeah, he's the main guy, and then they got Bryson Hopkins, the guy you just picked up. So Higby. Last year scored about 35 points, and I think the the guy they let go about the same. So yeah, he probably steps into that role. Not a bad tight end for you there. No, I it mean it could a, work out. A, yeah, it could work out. And from where I got him, I didn't have to pay a, a ton of capital for him. So it's, it's right. a risk worth taking. But it's also when well, you're looking at the overall rosters and chances for winning percentage next year, that's a real weakness. You got a real weakness there at tight end. Linebackers are are work in progress, and defensive backs are just fine. Defensive line is just fine. Yeah, the line looks good. There's there's a couple of there could be a couple of issues. If if I was you know ranking ranking teams, I think they have a chance to drop back to number three or four in a preseason right. poll if you don't factor. Which isn't at the end of the world. You know you'll still be able to stay alive, and you got a quarterback to build on. Um, Cisco is a good pickup there in the secondary. He can make a big difference for you. Uh, yeah, I think... really. Like... Go ahead. Really like the secondary. The secondary is, is going to be. Oh yeah. Is going to be good. The secondary is going to be good. The defensive oh. line is going to be good. I like uh, Williams, especially if he gets healthy. What he adds with Simmons and Hubbard there, and, and if Allen can ever kind of play to his talent level and, and, and get right, you know that could be could be a nice defensive line, but. I don't think they're going to be able to stand up against some of the tougher competition unless we get some good positive, positive development out of the linebacker. And yeah, the, you know, I do see. Yeah, I do see a potential bomb uh, ticking for you here at running back. I see what you're talking about now with Chubb. You have three guys, and one of them that you're depending on might be a, is a rookie. And yeah, Deshaun I mean, Vaughn is not proven, and yeah, if Nick Chubb goes down, this could be could be a rough <laughs> exit for App State. Yeah, this might be their their this. You know, I mean, not to say the future doesn't look bright, but maybe this year. Yeah, even though the wide receivers are good, you lose that Chubb, and that's that's serious stuff right there. Yeah, it could be it could be really tough. I. I uh... I wasn't really left with a lot of options. I was kind of hoping that uh, Buccaneers would let Fournette go and not right. resign him and at least give Vaughn an opportunity <laughs> to sneak in and get some carries, but uh, that uh, that didn't happen. So, Well, you know, it's all right, though. I mean, it's, it is what it is. You can't win every year. I know you'd like to, but, I mean, running San Diego State, you know, I take Trey Lance. That's not what I'm worried about so much, though. I, what was it I was – that's going to mess me up. Well, Trey Lance is one of them. That's pretty much it. You know, you, you you start building with a new quarterback, and you pretty much have to just accept that it might be a rebuild year. You know, it might not a rebuild necessarily, but just a throwaway year. And But you know that the next year things will improve, and that's just what it is. That's why I kind of like running two teams in this league. But, you know, I get it. If we get enough enthusiasm and get one owner per team, that would be great. And if everybody, you know, you you just have to understand that every year you're not going to be able to dominate necessarily. You're going to have to take your chops some years, you know, build them up. You're going to have to take that year off and let a guy develop. And and it's not the end of the world, though, because you do have, like, that lower pick, like Michigan and your team Alabama at the bottom part of the draft, the first round. You guys had that wraparound pick, and you guys did pretty good with those picks. Yeah, Alabama, I really feel good about. I mean, they got uh, they got a big break in the fact that uh, Darnold got traded to the Panthers, and it's no longer in that train wreck. Right. <laughs> that was the New York Jets. He comes in and plays for, for Brady down there in Carolina, and that offense looked so good last year. You look at what Bridgewater put up points-wise. He looked like a top point-scoring quarterback for fantasy purposes. Yeah, so I think Darnold's at least that good, and hopefully I'm right on that. But if Darn's at least that good, then Chase Edmonds becomes, you know, A one A out there in Arizona for a good offense. Gibson, who took a while to develop but really paid off there towards the end. You know, all of a sudden there's not a lot of other pieces that have to fall in place for Alabama to be 
considered a a winner this year, or at least move way up the ranks. Oh, they should move up. I think they'll move up. You have a quarterback now, and I know he's going to start. Justin Fields is going to start in Chicago, and that's a guy that some of you fantasy ballers who don't know about rookies, Justin Fields, take a look. Yeah, he's. I was I was really excited to get him there. I, I passed on being able to get, you know, a running back or a a wide receiver weapon there just because he's he's accurate, he's big, he runs. Uh, Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, think those guys when you think when you think Fields. Those are those are my two comparisons. Like I know that's pretty really lofty, pretty lofty. All right, but you know, like I I really see him being able to run with the ball and throw that big, accurate, deep ball. And you think about some of the guys in the league that are able to do all those things. He's pretty accurate as well, just in his intermediate game. He's tough. You know, like, as as much as I wasn't pulling for, for Ohio State to win last year right. in, in college games, I literally was an OSU fan. But, uh, like, he, he was really impressive. And the way he hung in when he was hurt that one game, he just made play after play after play. For them, I, maybe the um, I was trying to remember is the playoff system. I forget Northwestern maybe was who they were playing when he had that such heroic effort. But uh, yeah, he's he's talented. He's going to be he's going to be in that having, group. Uh, fly, they're having visions of Dwayne Haskins when they think about Justin Fields. I think. I, I think you kind of got to forget that this is just a different <laughs> right. player. To, uh, I'm just at, saying at, that's what they're thinking. Yeah. I think you know yeah, that's why I mean, he isn't going to get the love maybe because people are like oh god Ohio State rocks but. It's just because they have a great offensive line. That's why the quarterback was good. So, yeah, we're not going to – I'm not going that way because Dwayne Haskins, right? <laughs> right. But, yeah, I'm looking at some Justin Fields right now. We're going outside of the top four. But just, you know, it's kind of interesting to, to see what he can do. Yeah, he, you know, it is college. He's playing Nebraska there and runs the ball in. He has no fear of running the ball. He looks pretty lanky. He looks athletic. It's just so interesting to watch how that hot – Fall, kind of falls and builds and follows some of these players around. Because if you look at, you know, when college football was still active and playing before the combine and all of that, and we're talking draft prospects for, for this year, the fields for a couple of brief weeks during during his biggest hop when he's having those big games and playing so well in the playoffs and playing well injured, he was pushing Lawrence in some ratings for the number one spot. Wow. And that was the question, you know, who are you going to take if, you know, who are you going to take at that spot if you were you know, the Jets or Jacksonville, whichever one got it? You know, who did you go with? Were you, were you going with Lawrence or were you going with Fields? Yeah, you know, I, I don't know how many people remember back that far. Right. It's been, it's been a Well, here's the thing. I mean, you got the, the Chicago Bear curse on quarterbacks. Uh, Jim McMahon was their best quarterback ever, so I think a lot of people are going to be like, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like they just don't seem yeah. to produce a, a top quarterback. So maybe that's why a lot of people are like, forget about it. No way I'm going. I mean, he's a good backup in a regular fantasy league. In our league, he's definitely a bona fide starter because he's going to get playing time. Chicago moved on from Trubisky. So, yeah, you got yourself a starter there. Alabama should rise. I think Fields' is biggest curse may be Matt Nagy. If they, <laughs> let's get a different a different offensive philosophy in there. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. They they need yeah. some. I mean, Chicago is it's just uncanny how they just are mediocre at quarterback. So, all right, guys, that's gonna wrap it for this show. Um, I had a little problem with my storage. I forgot to delete some videos, and so we got cut off right there at that moment. But that was a good place to cut it off. Uh, we've been going on for about an hour and thirteen minutes. So that was Mark Jones, and he always has some great information. He's he's great for these shows because I can't remember everything all the time it's nice to have him there to bounce ideas off of and you know you know if i can't remember a name he always can you know i, I hope you guys enjoy the show we're going to be back pretty soon i know uh, camps are opening pretty soon here uh, i think it's the 28th of july and pretty quickly after that there's going to be there's going to be preseason games so we're going to try to do some some shows in rapid succession here in the near future so stay tuned to the channel and if you like the show and you want some more of our insight, you know, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's spread the word because uh, we're starting something pretty cool here with this uh, college-style football league where we draft seven rookies every year. And you basically can only keep a guy through his fourth or fifth season depending if you redshirt him. So it's a lot of fun, and a lot of guys are really catching on to 
to this this uh, format. It's a lot of fun for us, and I think that uh, some of you people out there that might be interested would enjoy it as well. At any rate, we're going to give you a lot more insight. Next show, we're going to go into kind of the also-rans or the other teams that might be able to step into the championship bracket. I know we talked about the four top teams from last year, which are also the four top teams going into this season, in our opinion, me and Mark's opinion. But there are some teams out there, some other clubs out there like um, Maryland. There is um, possibly somebody like Tulane. Wisconsin, Oregon, these teams might be able to step in and make some noise themselves. So we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about those teams on the next show. And we hope to see you here. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for watching, guys.